What's up YouTube, this is Dragon and these are the top 10 worst Pokemon evolutions. This list is going to be a mixture of aesthetics and practicalities of using these Pokemon. Some of these Pokemon will make you laugh and some of them will make you sad. However, I must say that the Pokemon I'll be mentioning are only my opinion and may be different from yours. If they do happen to be different, go ahead and write in the comments below whom you feel are truly the worst Pokemon evolutions. Well, without further ado, let's get to the top 10. Number 10, Archeops. At first, this Pokemon looks pretty promising. 379 attack and 350 speed with the jolly nature. Amazing rock and flying typing, giving it a great stab coverage, a variety of different attacks, including Aqua Tail and Earthquake, and on top of all that, it gets access to U-Turn to keep your opponents guessing. But all of this Pokemon's greatness is quickly stolen by what I once thought was simply a precondition of its previous form. You know, like a Magikarp going into a Gyarados type of thing, and that's its ability. Defeatus. As soon as Archeop reaches levels of 50% health, all of its attack power is cut in half. This is so depressing because this Pokemon had the potential to be a really great Pokemon, but all of it was just in vain because it was defeated before it even got a chance to shine. Guys, this Pokemon has 10 more attack than Jolly Mega Aerodactyl. It's already softer than a glass cannon, and with its terrible defenses, giving it Defeatus is truly overkill. Really Game Freak, did you really have to ruin this great Pokemon? Due to Archeops' lack of battling will, this Pokemon makes it on the list as one of the worst Pokemon evolutions. Number 9, Shedinja. So you get your first Shedinja and you look at its ability and surprise surprise, it has Wonder Guard, making it immune to all attacks besides attacks that are super effective against it. However, upon further inspection, you quickly realize it only has one health, but it's immune to all attacks that aren't super effective against it, and it has access to moves like Swords Dance, easily making light of the opposing Pokemon. You may think this is all good and dandy. Sure, I'll just send out Shedinja whenever my opponent doesn't have a Pokemon with a super effective attack. Easy, right? Well, it's not as good as you think. Go Tyranitar! Now Shedinja's immediately dead upon arrival. Stealth Rocks, a common entry hazard, makes Shedinja's entry futile. Spikes, Will-O-Wisp, Toxic, goodbye and have a nice day. Shedinja is a Pokemon that could have been great, but it's really offshooted by everything that the metagame commonly dishes out. Despite how wonderful Wonder Guard is, it's just not enough to make Shedinja viable, which is why, sadly, Shedinja makes it on this list. Number 8, Sunflora. Now this Pokemon just makes me sad in every single way possible. Aesthetically, it looks a bit disconcerting and its stats, oh my lord, its stats. For an evolved Pokemon, this Pokemon has some of the worst stats in the game. It's not bulky, it's not powerful, it's not fast, it's literally everything the opposite of that. Okay, maybe with the chlorophyll boost it gets 348 speed with a timid nature, but all you have to show for it is a measly 309 special attack and a defense stat that rivals Kakuna. Yes, Kakuna. Even Archeops isn't that bad. To make matters worse, without a chlorophyll boost, it only gets 174 speed to work with. I mean, really, what is that? What can you possibly do with that? Is this really all an evolved Pokemon has to offer? I mean, if it dies by Peck and Ember, then, like, this is nothing but a joke. Like, are you serious? Come on. Comically, it gets Earth Power and Sludge Bomb, but it's not like it'll ever get a chance to use those attacks because it'll already be dead by the time it even thinks about attacking the opponent. So, for being dead weight and pretty much useless on almost everyone's team, this Pokemon wilts itself on this list as one of the top 10. Number 7, Doug Trio. Why Doug Trio, you ask? Just look at this Pokemon. All it is is just three Diglett coming together and forming Doug Trio, and they have the nerve to show the animation of the Pokemon evolving. Just look at this Doug Trio. Ridiculous, isn't it? Now, as you look at this Pokemon, you may feel like you're being deceived, but when I see Doug Trio, I feel like I'm being led astray as well. But that's just aesthetics. 
this Pokemon, although not as bad as Sunflora, is really close to being within that range. What saves this Pokemon from being completely useless is its 372 speed and arena trap ability, but it has a terrible 259 attack stat and defenses that are even worse than Sunflora. If you want to get any mileage off of this Pokemon, you have to at minimum give it a choice band, and even with that, you still only get 388 attack that's not nearly enough to do any consistent real damage and the choice band forces you to play almost exclusively for the sole purpose of trapping a Pokemon and killing it where's the versatility in that tons of speed but no power like a frail Alakazam without any special attack number six watch off Ah yes, the Pokemon notoriously known for putting your Pokemon to sleep, then taking half of their health away with Super Fang. For those of you that played through Generation 5 of Pokemon, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But that hypnotic annoyance isn't exactly the reason why Watchog's on this list. Watchog's on the list because there could have been more to this Pokemon. I kind of feel like there was supposed to be a third evolution to it. Sort of like having a Charmeleon never evolve into Charizard. Ironically, once you get Charmeleon, you feel pretty good. But but you know in the back of your mind that there may be something greater, but this Pokemon never delivers. Heck, throughout the whole time I was using Watchog, I was waiting for the surprise evolution that just never came. It was sad, really sad, and unfortunately, that's why this Pokemon is on this list. Number 5, Masquerade. This bug water, bug flying, water flying Pokemon is possibly one of the most confusing Pokemon to ever exist. Now its real typing is bug and flying, but don't say I never warned you after especially watching it use Hydro Pump. And how deceptive, look at the color scheme of this Pokemon. It's clearly a water type, you know, like when it was a Surskit, bug and water type. But besides all that, this Pokemon just falls short of everything. Okay, it gets Intimidate to make up for its horrendous defense, but that's just on the incoming. It has okay special defense, but is weak to flying, rock, fire, electric, and ice, all relatively common attack types. It gets Roost, but it's too slow to really utilize it. Its defenses lies within its lies because, well, you might hit it when it's the different type and you might mistake the typing, but that's really all that it actually has. You go out trying to power whip this Pokemon just to get quad resist Existed in Bug Buzz. Or maybe you tried to earthquake it thinking it's not part flying and ironically get Hydro Pump. Now no experienced player is gonna fall for these type of shenanigans, but really, what else can this Pokemon do? I wish there was more, but because there isn't, Masquerade makes it to number 5 on this list. Number 4, Bastodon. Now at first, you'll look at this Pokemon and say, oh my god, this Pokemon's got some amazing defenses, and you'd be kinda right. It has 372 defense with a neutral nature, and 312 special defense with a neutral nature. And that's with no Eevees, but here's the problem. Okay, this Pokemon's got good defenses, but it'll never stay alive. What's the point of having all those defenses if you have no way of maintaining them? Where's your point of recovery? Slack off, regenerate, pain split? This Pokemon has none of that. The only defense it has is Resto Chesto. You know, going to sleep with the Chesto Berry and coming back at full health after resting and, you know, waking yourself up with the berry and whatnot. But to make matters worse, this Pokemon has one of the worst attack stats in the game. You thought Dugtrio was bad, this Pokemon only gets 223 attack, and that's if it's max attack 252 adamant. And who's gonna waste their EVs and nature on a defensive Pokemon of that type? Not me, for only having 140 attack and a nearly non-existent means of maintaining itself, Bastodon defense itself as number four on this list. Number three, Ferret. Now don't get me wrong, Ferret is a really cute Pokemon. This Dustbuster, shout out to the Killer Nacho, would be very soft and cuddly to hug. But I have a question. If you had a kitten, would you send it out to battle? No? Well, that's perfectly understandable because kittens don't have that much defense and their attack power is kind of low as well. That is Ferret's problem. It has 306 speed, which is okay, terrible, but okay, and a humongously small 251 attack. However, unlike Dugtrio, this Pokemon isn't trapping anyone anytime soon. Its defense and special defense is pretty 
bad, and it lacks the speed Dugtrio has to provide itself with any sort of advantage. It's rather unfortunate because wouldn't it be badass to obliterate somebody with this Pokemon as cute as this? It can be really hard, but it's just not actually plausible, and I expected more from Furret, which is why, unfortunately, Furret makes its way on this list. Number 2, Levani. This Pokemon, hands down, has the worst typing in the game. It's weak to flying, poison, rock, bug, fire, and ice, and it has no immunities and takes quadruple damage from both fire and flying types, which are very common attack types in the meta. Now in the sun, with this chlorophyll ability, this Pokemon gets some pretty decent speed, with a speed stat of 311 with a jolly nature. But what's the point of all that if its main stab moves are resisted by a large portion of the metagame and it dies by pecking ember? And regular fire type, steel type, flying type, and even poison Poison types can resist any of these Pokemon stab attacks and kill it with one hit. And of course, similar to Sunflora, this Pokemon only gets the speed boost during the limited time that the sun is out. As far as I'm concerned, its defenses don't even count as a stat because almost every Pokemon has a move that could kill it immediately by a super effective attack. For being almost dead on arrival, Levani makes it to number 2 on this list. And now, for number 1, what can be worse than Levani? Is there a Pokemon that can be that bad? That disappointing? Well, prepare yourself, for that Pokemon is... Slacking. Of all the Pokemon that disappoint me the most, Slacking does it better than no other. So one day I caught a Slack off and thought, aw man, this Truant ability is just terrible. There has to be something better than this. So Slack off evolves and gets a beastly vital spirit. Now I'm kicking ass and taking names and feeling pretty good in the battlefield. Then something amazing happens, it evolves again. Now at this point, I'm ready to destroy towns, civilizations, islands, I'm ready to be unstoppable. After seeing it evolve, I know for sure its ability is going to be devastation. But I look at its status and check its ability, and at that very moment, I knew that everything I believed in was a lie. Within one moment, Vigoroth became strong, fast, and useless. Slacking with Truant is like being a millionaire with frozen assets. You can have all the speed and power in the world, but it's absolutely useless if you can't use it. Slacking is the embodiment of disappointment, making him the most disappointing Pokemon to ever exist. Now before you go, you may be asking yourself, Dragon, I'd like to create some real competitive Pokemon that can really put in some work. How can I do that? Well, with this guide, I will show you exactly how it's done in creating a Pokemon in less than 15 minutes. Yes, it's exactly what you think. You think about a Pokemon and then create it in less than 15 minutes. Well, my fellow Dragonites, thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.